Well, good morning, friends, and welcome to Worship at Home. I must admit that I didn't think I'd be saying those words again this year, but obviously COVID-19 had other ideas. Uh, We look forward to returning to worshipping together in our church buildings uh, when we can, uh, when the restrictions allow it. Alan will talk a bit more about that uh, at the end of today's service. Either way, we continue to pray that the uh, latest outbreak of the virus uh, is suppressed quickly. So let's uh, begin with prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we await your coming. We wait filled with hope, knowing that your light will shine in the darkness. We wait immersed in your love. May we reach out to share your love with our neighbours. We wait in anticipation of your peace, believing that one day it will fill our lives completely. And we wait with abundant joy, bubbling up in us in expectation of your birth. Lord Jesus, we wait for you. Come soon and fill us with your life. Amen. Friends, Jesus' words to us in Matthew 18 are very appropriate as we gather together once more in our homes to worship. Uh, Jesus says, For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. So we begin our time of worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. as we await Jesus' return, let us continue to confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him to be merciful to us for Jesus' sake. Today, is our, uh, for our prayer of confession, we uh, use some of the words of the first of the Old Testament reading for this Sunday. We use some of the words of Isaiah 64, uh, verses 5 to 9. So if you've got your readings at home, uh, uh, which were sent out to you, feel free to open them up and And join with us now as we confess our sins to our God. Lord, you come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continued to sin against them, you were angry. How then can we be saved? All All of us have have become become like like one one who is unclean, and and all our righteous righteous acts are like filthy rags. We We all shrivel up like a leaf, and and like like the wind, wind, our our sins sweep us away. 
Lord, no one calls on your name or strives to lay, hold, to lay hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have given us over to our sins. Yet you, Yet Lord, you Lord, are Lord. our Father. We, we are, are the, the clay. clay. You, you are, are the are potter. potter. We, we are, are all, all the work of your, your hand. hand. Do not be angry beyond measure, Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. Oh, oh look, look on, on us, us we, we pray. pray. For we are all all your your people. people. Have Have mercy mercy and forgive us in Jesus' name. Fill us us with your Holy Spirit Spirit and help help us to obey you. Keep Keep us from all evil evil and bring bring us to eternal life. We pray through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, hear the beautiful good news once again. In his faithfulness, our God no longer remembers our sins, but instead he gives us grace and strength so that we may be blameless on the day of our Lord. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of the word, I announce the grace of God to each of you. And on behalf of my Lord Jesus Christ and by his command, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, God's peace be with each of you. Amen. Amen. And even though we're not here together, I invite you to share the peace uh, with those in your household. Perhaps those here tonight would like to share the peace of, uh, of Christ with each other uh, before we continue. Fantastic. Lots of peace be with you. Sign language. There you go. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray that we uh, would remain alert for the coming of our Lord Jesus. Jesus, Son Son of God, God, you have have promised promised to to return return at a time time that that no one knows. knows. Keep Keep us watchful in prayer and and strong in faith as we wait wait for you to come. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, today is uh, the first Sunday in Advent, uh, the season of waiting, the season of preparation and, and being ready for not only the birth of Christ but also his second coming at the end of the age. So, um, as we always do, we're going to light the first candle of our Advent wreath and I invite Tanya to come forward and do that now. And uh, we join together as we pray. Lord God, God, thank thank you for keeping keeping the promises promises you made made through the prophets prophets and and sending us a a Saviour. Fill us us with hope as as we get ready to celebrate celebrate Jesus' Jesus birth birth, and as as we we wait wait for his his return. return. Amen. Amen. We now hear God's word to us uh, for this first Sunday in Advent. The reading comes from the first Corinthians, chapter one, commencing at the third verse. As you wait for Christ's return. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way, with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge, God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift 
as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end, so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the Gospel is from Mark chapter 13, commencing at 24th verse. No one knows the day or the hour. But in those days, following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and it leaves, its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the clock, crock, cock crows, or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Thanks, Alan. Um, I I have a few children here this morning, which is fantastic. Would you guys like to come up here for the children's message? Help me feel not so alone up here uh, as I talk to the camera. Slowly coming up, that's fantastic. And good morning to all the children who might be watching from home this, uh, this morning as well. Whoa. Do you guys hear That's my alarm. Can you hear that? That's my alarm. We've got to get ready. We've got to get ready. All right, I've got to turn this off. You guys ready? Alana, are you ready? Jake, are you ready? Eli, you must be ready. You look ready over there. You guys ready? No, you are looking. You are. You are ready, Alana. Uh, Zara, what are you ready for? Nothing. All oh, right. It might seem a bit strange what I'm saying. I'm saying, are you ready? You're probably thinking, what, what do you need to be ready for? You know, sometimes I feel like that when I get up in the morning. My alarm goes off and I know that I need to get up and I know that I need to get ready for the day. Uh, for the day ahead, but I don't always know what's going to happen um, as the day unfolds. But I get up and I get ready anyway. So what sort of things do you do to get ready in the morning for school, for example? What do you have to do to get ready? Get changed? Make your lunch, lunch? yep. Do you need to make sure you've got your books in your bag or whatever else you need in your bag to go to school? Yeah. Perhaps uh, you may have to think to yourself, school finishes at 3.15 or is it 3.30? When does school finish for you guys? 3.15, maybe you get yourself ready, you prepare yourself for going, I only have to be there till 3.15, then I can go home. Maybe that might be how you get ready to go to school. So when we get ready to do things, uh, we get all the things that we need go to school we might uh, think about what lessons we have today what friends we might see what teachers we might have we do all these things to get ready to go to school now right now at church we're also getting ready for something do you know what that might be 
what's coming up at the end of the year. Give you a clue, uh, normally you get presents at this time of the year. Christmas, yeah, we're all getting ready for Christmas. And this period of getting ready for Christmas is called Advent. Have you guys heard that word before? Yeah? What is Advent? Do you know what Advent is? No? Like a parade. Yeah, sort of. So we're kind of uh, all waiting together uh, for Christmas. We're all waiting and getting ready for Christmas together. Uh, that's why I'm wearing this uh, blue stole today, and that's why uh, your mum lit the, um, one of the Advent candles on the Advent wreath before, because there's four weeks of Advent, so each Sunday of Advent we light a candle, and then what do you think the big candle in the middle might be for? Why have we got a big white one there? Yeah, Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, you light that candle, and who do you think that candle might represent? God, Jesus, yeah, that's right, so that's why we've got our Advent wreath there. So uh, while everyone in the world is already celebrating Christmas, we're still in the season of Advent, uh, which means to wait. And we get uh, ready by waiting, uh, sort of like how you get ready in the morning, getting ready for school, and then maybe you might have to wait on the bus or wait to be dropped off in the line of cars in the car park. Uh, so Advent is sort of similar to, uh, waiting in Advent is sort of similar to that. Now, in today's Bible reading, Jesus was talking to some of his friends and he was asking them to wait. He was asking them to be ready uh, as well. Do you know what he might have been asking them to get ready for? Did you hear it in the reading by any chance? Because Jesus was already born at this time and he was, um, this was not long before he was going to go to the cross and die for our sins. And so Jesus was encouraging his friends to be ready to wait for um, when he would return uh, again at the end uh, of the world because you see we have Jesus with us at the moment uh, we, we see Jesus in each other in the Bible God's Word but we don't have Jesus with us face to face we can't sort of give him a hug or he can't sort of uh, hold our hand and walk us through tough times physically he's not physically there but one day he will return again and we'll see him face to face and this won't be a scary thing it'll be a wonderful thing an amazing thing to finally meet Jesus and spend that time with him. It's sort of like when you go to school. Do you, do you sometimes miss mum or dad when you go to school? Or not really? Do you miss your toys at home or miss something else at home that you can't access when you're at school? I don't know. So it's sort of like that with Jesus. So we know he's coming. We know we'll see him one day. We're, we're longing for him now, but um, he's not quite here yet. And so perhaps when your alarm goes off next, do you have an alarm clock? Or does mum wake you up? How do you wake up in the morning? You wake up yourself, you've got an inbuilt alarm clock, that's pretty good. If I didn't have an alarm clock, I'd probably sleep in, I'm terrible. So when your alarm goes off in the morning or when you wake up in the morning, uh, that's, that can be a reminder that uh, each day God calls us to uh, share his love with others, to tell people that Jesus is coming soon. And it also reminds us to have hope and, and, and be joyful as we wait for Jesus to come at Christmas time and for him to come again uh, at the end of time. How about we pray, and then you can head back to your seats. Lord Jesus, thank you for being with us always. Help us to tell everyone we meet about you and your love for the world. Thank you that we are always in your love. And thank you for all the people in our lives who love us. Keep us awake and watchful for you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thanks, everyone. It's good to have you guys up here. And I hope, and it's good to see you, well, not see you, but it's good to have the children at home joining us as well. Friends, my uh, message for this morning is based... Uh, on the Gospel reading from Mark 13, where, uh, which makes up a part of this long discourse in Mark 13, where Jesus talks about the signs of the end of the world and what we should expect as uh, the time draws nearer for him to return. So let's pray as we uh, reflect on this passage now. Lord Jesus, we know and trust that just 
as your birth in Bethlehem was a fulfillment of promise. Your return at the end of the age is also a promise that you will indeed keep. Refresh our hope in you as we dwell in your word now. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Life is full of situations where we know that something is going to happen, but we don't know exactly when it will happen. For example, as we listen to the hold music when we call Telstra or another service for help, we know that at some point, at some undefined point of time, an operator will alleviate our angst by saying, Welcome to Telstra, how can I help you? Expectant parents know that their baby will enter into this world sometime around the due date, but of course they don't know for sure whether the baby may uh, come on time or come early or even be a little bit overcooked. And of course, every die-hard footy fan, such as myself, desperately longs for their team to have the ultimate success. But when exactly they'll win their next premiership is anyone's guess. Uh, especially if you're a Crow supporter right now. In all of these situations, uh, there is evidence to suggest that the said event will indeed happen, which provides those waiting with uh, a degree of confidence and hope. And perhaps the most uh, vivid example of this truth is the constant changing in COVID-19 restrictions which we are currently experiencing or which we've just experienced. Uh, As you know, in the space of just one week, we went from our relatively relaxed restrictions to more stringent ones, and then we entered a a six-day lockdown, which uh, was cut short to three days, just as we all started to find fashionable ways to wear our face masks. And now, of course, we're back to the pre-lockdown conditions or restrictions with the hope that these will continue to ease further as we head towards the Christmas season. What a roller coaster ride of uh, thoughts and emotions this little virus has taken us on. We knew that uh, new virus clusters would arise without much warning, but I don't think any of us quite expected the scenario that we've just gone through. And of course, we know that restrictions will continue to ease, they won't stay the same but we don't know uh, exactly yet how how, or or, or when this will all happen. The second coming of Jesus is also something that we as Christians are expecting to happen. We know and trust that it will occur, but again, we don't know exactly when our Lord will return to make all things completely new, both us and all of creation. Many, uh, many people over time have tried to decipher all the metaphors in, in the book of Revelation and predict when Jesus will return. And some have even uh, falsely claimed that they have received direct revelation from God uh, concerning the date and time, which uh, contradicts what our Lord Jesus says to us in Mark chapter 13. He says, But about that day or hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, only the Father. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. Jesus uh, emphasizes what he says here. He emphasizes this truth with with his analogies of the fig tree and the uh, house owner uh, that are found in this text. He says, just as leaves appearing on a fig tree indicate that summer is approaching, the signs of this decaying world, which are mentioned throughout Mark 13, remind us that Jesus' return is imminent. And just as the slaves uh, are encouraged to stay awake and keep working because they don't know when uh, their master will return from holiday, Jesus' return at the end of the world will also be sudden. Jesus coming in the clouds with glory and power is indeed getting closer and closer and it will happen at a time that is unknown to us. So rather than being obsessed with or about when he will return, Jesus encourages his disciples, he encourages us to be watchful, to be attentive to the signs that point to 
the end of this world. Throughout his uh, discourse in, uh, about the end times in Mark 13, Jesus mentions many signs that uh, will remind his followers to be ready. But let's just focus on the two that are mentioned in this morning's text. In verses 24 and 25, Jesus declares that after some suffering has occurred, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Now, I don't know about you, but this all sounds a little bit scary, a bit crazy and hard to comprehend. The sun and moon being extinguished and stars and planets falling from the sky in a heavy downpour sounds like something out of a cosmic horror movie, one of those end of the world movies. And what is this suffering that's going to occur before the solar system as we know it collapses into a heap? This suffering might refer to the other signs that are mentioned in Mark 13 such as wars and natural disasters and Christians being persecuted for their faith. It may also refer to just human suffering in general. Either way, the suffering that we see in our lives and in the lives of those around us remind us that this world is not permanent. One day it will come to an end. Now, when you take a deep breath and you stop and process the gravity of these signs, the enormity of human evil and suffering, you could be excused for desperately wanting to know exactly when Jesus will return, the date, the time, the place. You can be excused for wanting to know that, for wanting to know when the effects of sin will be gone forever. But our faith in Christ isn't about knowing everything but rather trusting God in everything. This means that we are to view the signs of this decaying world not as dark and scary indicators of doom but as signs of hope and comfort. As much as suffering is challenging and painful, it's also a sign that this world isn't all that there is. Jesus is still fulfilling his promise to us to make all things new and how beautiful it will be when his work is complete, when his saving and restoring work uh, is consummated. As frightening as it may sound that the Milky Way will, so will one day be erased from existence, this is all part of God's plan to one day create a beautiful new heavens and new earth. One can only imagine the perfection and the paradise that awaits those who have faith in Christ. But of course, viewing uh, these, or the decay of this world through the lens of hope is uh, quite countercultural. It's much easier said than done. I can't think of any apocalyptic movie that I've seen or heard of that portrays the end of the world as a good thing, as something to look forward to. That is, viewing the uh, signs of the end times with hope rather than uh, despair is an act of faith. We simply cannot do this without the Holy Spirit's help. So friends, hear clearly the beautiful words of gospel hope that our Lord Jesus speaks to us in this text that are interspersed between the alarming signs. He says to us, at that time, at the end of the world, people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great glory and power. And he will send his angels to gather the elect from the, uh, from the four winds, from the four ends of the earth and to, uh, to the ends of the heavens. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Our Lord Jesus promises us that all the elect, that is all those who have faith in him, will be gathered by his angels when the solar system collapses and be taken to live with him forever in peace and safety. 
and we can trust that this will indeed happen because unlike this world Jesus words will never pass away his promises will never ever fail he will never go back on his word on what he has done for us through his death and resurrection What's more, these uh, words of gospel hope, these signs of hope, also fuel, fuel our mission to those who are lost, those who have wandered away from the church, and those who have never heard uh, about Jesus and his saving work. The signs of hope that we uh, read about in Mark 13 ins uh, inspire an urgency of mission and outreach. They remind us that God calls us to pour our heart and soul out, all our time and energy into mission rather than, getting, rather than getting caught up in church politics. And they also get us thinking about just how many people we'd love to see the angels gathering to Jesus as we too reach our heavenly home. So friends... The same hope that the birth of Jesus brings is alive in our souls through the Spirit as we await Jesus' second coming. Just as the anticipation of the final siren sounding helps a footy fan endure his team's bad performance, so too the signs of the end times instill in us hope for an eternal future free from underwhelming human performances. As we enter this season of Advent once again, I encourage you to wait impatiently for the consummation of hope, longing to see Jesus face to face and know him just as fully as he knows you. Amen. And as we wait for Jesus' return, I invite you to join with me now as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended, he ascended into heaven, heaven and, and sits, sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, our Lord Jesus calls us to continually watch and pray. So let's join together once more um, as we pray for the church, the world, and also ourselves. Lord Jesus, thank you for coming in the flesh at Bethlehem and for coming to us whenever we gather in your name. Keep us alert and watchful through the dark night of this world and give us confidence and hope as we wait for your coming in glory. Keep us alert and watchful in support of one another. Guard us from everything false and untrue and shine on us with the light of your holy word. Help each of us not to be afraid of the signs of the end times but to receive hope and comfort from them as we anticipate your return. We praise you that the evidence of decay in, this world, in the world around us points to a future free from pain, evil and suffering, which you have only made possible for us through your birth, life, death and resurrection. Instill in our souls an unshakable hope as we journey through this Advent season. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all nations and all peoples of the world. Lift the eyes of those in authority to their duty to govern wisely and well, 
for the good of all. Curb all terror and replace it with peace. Wake all people up to your just judgment and to your saving blood. Keep each of us alert and watchful to serve you by giving witness and good service to others in our daily lives. And we praise you that the Parafield COVID-19 cluster has been brought under control by the SA Government, SA Health and the cooperation of all South Australians. Thank you that restrictions, restrictions are beginning to ease as Christmas draws nearer. Please heal those who are sick, sustain all healthcare workers and police officers and bless the ongoing vaccine development work. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We ask for your blessing, Lord, upon the work of Lutheran Disability Services in our state. Proclaim your love and new life to carers and clients alike as they interact with each other. Thank you for the unique and invaluable contributions that people with disabilities make to our church's life and mission. Continue to uh, work through other organisations and individuals too in caring for and encouraging those who live with a disability. And we pray for all pastoral care workers in public schools across our state, including uh, our, uh, the local Eastern Florio School, as they seek to share the message of Christmas, the message of Christ's birth with their students. Please bless Jeanette Mann, Eloise de Haas, Letitia Wise, Bequita Wise and Kerry Crowden as they serve you in their school communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, thank you for providing us with everything we need for daily living. Bring relief to all those affected by drought and poverty. Keep us alert and watchful, ready to meet the needs of others. And move us to give generously to appeals at Christmas time. Lord, please stand by those who wake or watch or weep. Give rest to those who are weary. Soothe those who are struggling or suffering. Shield those who prosper. And please come to those who we know to be in particular need at this time, including Trevor and Rosemary Evans, Gerhard Marx, Kevin Yench, Thelma and Bevan Newman, Ray Johnson, Gwen and Rex Lange, Don and Ruth Smith, John and Mavis Angel, Catherine Jopic and her family, and Neville Donhart as well as those whom we now name silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we do not know the day or the hour that you will come with great power and glory. Keep us always alert and watchful so that we may welcome you with joy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We join together with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Friends, God sends you from here with every spiritual gift you need. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be free from all blame on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. God will do this for you because he is faithful to do what he says. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you his peace. Amen. Folks, uh, welcome to worship at home. Uh, it's been a pleasure to bring this service to you, uh, with the help, of course, of Pastor uh, Vicky playing the uh, the music, Tanya singing, Mark, Anne, and uh, Janet producing the uh, the video and the the uh, overhead. We uh, to start with, um, as we have been doing traditionally for a while, birthdays, and we have one birthday announcement. Uh, Deirdre Hirsch had her birthday last Thursday the 26th. So if you all remember the words, they should be on the screen. Here we go. Sounds different when everybody in the church claps. Right to the announcements. Uh, the announcements, most of the announcements in the bulletin are correct as of the time of printing. Uh, a few, of course, um, have had to be altered. Um, men's uh, shed happens didn't happen on Friday, and uh, a couple of other things uh, have been cancelled. I believe that the um, Deck the Halls Market Trail is still going ahead next Saturday. Um, that'll be spread out through the two halls, the hall, the Rosa Hall Room and a little bit outside. So um, that, to our knowledge, is, uh, is still on from 10 till 4 uh, next Saturday. Also at the Uniting Catholic and the Anglican Church Halls as well. 
I'm not sure about Struth, whether that will still be happening. That's possibly, because that is an outside, uh, I think that's an outside thing. Um, maybe not. With the, uh, it, it's good that the, uh, some of the restrictions are being lifted, but as uh, those of you who may have watched the uh, service from Handorf last Sunday, when the four square metre rule is in, we're out, and when the four square metre rule is out, we're back in. So uh, whilst the uh, four square metre rule is still as it is, we will not be able to have uh, services as usual in, inside the church. Uh, and that uh, seems to be the case for the next two weeks at least. So for the next two Sundays, more than likely, it'll be uh, service uh, worship at home, unless we can come up with some other idea that, uh, um, that we may be able to come up with. Now, also in regards to uh, COVID-19, we've also received advice that um, tomorrow, Monday the 30th of November, we should be receiving, this is uh, the, uh, the various uh, secretaries, should be receiving um, their new COVID safe plans to coincide with the new restrictions, lifting of the restrictions. But that will also include a QR code that we should print off and have uh, displayed at the, uh, at the entrances to our church, churches when we, when we do resume our services. Um, so I guess from, uh, from that, the information that we have, you will need, if you haven't already done so, to download the MySAGov app on your mobile phones. Um, but don't let that worry you, uh, because we will still be having a paper, uh, paper trail. We will still be writing down the, uh, those of you who attend church at particular weeks. So. Uh, uh, if you don't have the uh, the app, or you uh, for some reason leave your mobile phone at home, um, don't worry too much about that. But um, you know, it's one of those things that uh, the government have been doing a mighty job in trying to uh, curtail this uh, uh, this nasty virus. Um, but it's just not going to help us terribly much over the next few weeks. So. Unless you hear otherwise, next, uh, next week we will have worship at home. And until then, God bless. <laughs>